Starting last week, I had a voxelizer system which took 14 seconds to generate a single piece of terrain. It was slow. And because of this, I came to the conclusion that I would have to scrap what I had planned up until this month and try and get it as optimised as I possibly could. Without this optimization, I would waste tons of time just sitting around waiting for the grass to grow, literally. But from this simple conviction came an unexpected mountain of work. Yeah, I think I've maybe got COVID. <coughs> as much as it would take a while. Could I actually get it improved? Hello. So basically, uh, the problem is this. It now takes an unacceptable amount of time to generate the single mesh for the terrain. And that's as a result of the fact that it really has to generate multiple meshes underneath so you can show and hide them accordingly. The system was never actually written for that sort of use case, so unsurprisingly, it doesn't actually work that well. So I think the plan is that I would try and condense this all down into a single loop, so you iterate through the map data once, collect it all together into some place, and then send it off to the voxelizer. That shouldn't be... <laughs> shouldn't be too bad. Um, okay, so I'm not really as sure about this as I was a moment ago. Uh, from having read through it, it's clear to me that there's no way I'm going to be able to retrofit it to get it to do what I need it to do. It's just not doable. But, as a result of going through a lot of this code, I've kind of come to the realisation that I think there's probably the opportunity for a far bigger optimization, Something that is bigger than any other optimization I've put into this game so far. The idea was this. So I'd already built a vox to mesh class, essentially this can just take a data structure filled with voxel data and output it as a finished mesh. So when I came to convert my map data with altitude to a mesh, I would first create a data structure, populate it and pass that to the voxelizer. This was inefficient however, as the voxelizer was just super generic. You could generate this as easily as you could generate this. I'm using height map terrain, so all the values are 2D, meaning there can never be overhangs or anything like that. However, the voxelizer could generate that if it needed to. So the optimization I'm thinking of is to build a voxelizer algorithm specifically for the terrain, able to assist with all the needs of a terrain generator. Couple that with the fact that I had different regions now, all I really did then was split the data off into different data structures and call the voxelizer for each region. Turns out there's massive overhead in that. But honestly, it's not just that. It's the more I think about it, the more I realized how many potential optimizations could actually be made in the terrain generation system. The potential holy grail of the optimizations would be me cutting out all the unnecessary data structures, reducing my three-dimensional loop down to a 2D one, minimizing unnecessary buffer reads, and making assumptions about the generated mesh that you can do when dealing with something like terrain. And if I'm correct, then I'll have to do this stuff at some point anyway, so you might as well do it now. And thus began the creation of a new function which could voxelize map gen output data. In this case, all of the data is stored in a byte buffer, packed as a 32-bit integer per voxel. So the idea was that vox to mesh would iterate this data, pull out the altitude and push some vertices to the vertex soup accordingly. It would then make reference to the altitude of neighbouring voxels to decide which side pieces to draw. So part of the reason this can be optimised is that I can make a bunch of assumptions about the output mesh. Assumptions like, I'll always have a top face, so no need to check that. I'll only need to draw the side pieces as far down as the neighbour altitude rather than treating each as a voxel. I can pre-calculate voxel specific values such as UVs on my texture atlas rather than per voxel. And importantly, I can maintain multiple vertex and indice buffers and push into them according to regions, meaning multiple region meshes can be generated as part of the same loop, and that's a massive optimization. The new system started to fall into place pretty quickly and it was great fun pulling out a load of unnecessary code. Eventually, I had the upwards faces working, now it was just time for the side faces. Honestly, that required a lot of fiddling, debugging to get a decent understanding on what was wrong with the mesh, but eventually I had something that began to resemble what I expected. It just took a whole lot of effort. And now with the mesh looking as I expected, it was time to return something that I had spent a week working on before. A shadowing effect that makes voxel terrain look actually good. Ambient occlusion. The previous terrain had it, this new one did not. It absolutely needed it. And... This was where things started to go wrong. See, 
Me trying to re-implement ambient occlusion brought to my attention something that I had just brushed off and ignored. Does the lighting really look correct on this terrain? Importantly, where are the shadows? You see, I had taken all of the vertex, normal and ambient occlusion tables from Goxel, which is just an open source voxel editor project. They were nicely calculated for me. The mistake I had made was that when I had recreated my terrain, I had recreated using a different coordinate system. So basically, everything was backwards. I had uh, basically eyeballed the entire thing. So as a result, my normals were wrong and my ambient occlusion was also wrong. I would either have to recalculate the tables or I would have to start from scratch. And then, Yeah, so I'd been to a gathering where a lot of people had been ill. I did two tests, both of which were negative, but I definitely had something and was medicating with warm drinks and time at home. But I knew that time was slipping away to get that terrain optimization working. I was behind schedule again for what I thought I'd get done in October, as my development was constantly hampered by technical rewrites. Hooray. So I took steps to rewrite what I had while also drinking some lemon water. I had to have the same orientation as the previous system and the same faces used for everything. I started by bringing back the old system and comparing the two, modifying them by hand until they looked correct. Once the vertices faced the same way, I would then move on. I got them all in place, looking the same as before, and surprisingly enough, the shadows just started to work as they did before. Hooray. Then I tried to bring ambient occlusion back. So for this algorithm you have to determine if the corner voxel as well as the two side voxels are visible for each vertice on the face. I realised I could just do all this with the altitude values and could use voxel tables same as before. What took me a long time was just figuring out the order in which the checks needed to go. There was lots of quite horrific trial and error, but as I had taken the time to ensure my coordinate system was now correct, eventually it just started to work. I was almost as shocked as you are right now, I assume. The shadows looked as I expected them to, properly shaded in all the corners with the correct decorations. I was genuinely over the moon at this. I now had my optimised terrain creation method with ambient occlusion, shadows and everything in between working as it did before. It was close enough for me to be able to make the final modification, probably the most important for this whole thing, the ability to create different regions. This did cause some agitation, but it eventually worked as I expected, and suddenly everything sprang to life. So, let's review the entire changes. The world used to populate a 3D array with voxel data for the map buffers for each region. Now the voxelizer reads the map buffers itself and generates regions in one single loop. The voxelizer now calculates a voxel altitude up front and determines the size of the vertex buffers. So this allows me to skip the creation of the intermediate vertices and indices array and the subsequent having to write those array values out to a buffer. Uh, this was sort of a workaround, sort of not. The thing was, I didn't know how many vertices and indices I was going to have because I hadn't really trolled through the list at that point yet. So it kind of made sense to populate those arrays originally. But in this new system, I can just completely avoid that because if I check the altitude first and I can make assumptions about how big the train is going to be, right? I know how many vertices I'm going to have. So that's fantastic. I managed to break a 3D loop down to a 2D one, which is significant because it's a three dimensional nested loop. I can perform more voxel calculations up front, so that's things like determining the texture coordinates because every voxel in the stack is going to have the same colour. I didn't necessarily know that in the old system because I couldn't confirm that, but I can make that assumption in this new one. And I can basically avoid a load of checks because I can again make more assumptions about the terrain, so if I can assume that it's never going to go outside the bounds of the world, which in the case of I'm generating islands here basically, I can make that assumption. So that's just another nice optimization I can do. Anyway, now I know you're here for the numbers, so let me give them to you. I tested by generating a 400 by 400 as well as an 800 by 800 world. I found both a seed with a low voxel count and also one with a high voxel count. Just compare the differences because the more voxels, the slower it will be, right? So these are the four test cases I wanted to check. The worst case will obviously be with regions and also using the busy seed. So, for the 400 by 400, the new system voxelized the map in 1.4 seconds, compared to 14.5 seconds of the old system. It's literally 10 times faster. So, breathe that in chaps, that's the smell of success. With the simple seed there was bigger comparative improvements because the old system would have had to do a lot of redundant unnecessary checks. So 10 seconds of oxalize versus half a second on the new system. When you get to 800 by 800, the improvements start to become more apparent. The old system took 47.6 seconds to generate the map with regions, while the new system takes 4.3. 
That's an 11 times improvement. Hooray! So, that was a long one. So, I think part of the problem I have at the moment is I keep seeming to get pulled off from doing gameplay work onto this technical stuff. Oh, there's just always something that seems to be happening. But aside from that, there are some other optimizations. so part of the problem I have with it is that it's not threaded at the moment. That is a fairly big one. And what, all, all that means is that when you start the game up, it'll freeze for a little while and, you know, because it hangs the main thread. It shouldn't be doing that. I really need to address that. So I think the plan going forwards is that I want to add more sort of biomes to the game. So when you walk into a region, you actually find something interesting. It's not just like, oh, there's another bit of grass and you get the exact same stuff that was in there before. I want to have things like, you know, interesting items, interesting enemies that appear in the regions, uh, things you can discover, flashy GUI effects. It's like, wow, you found something, congratulations. That's what this game's going to be about. And for me, getting versions of the game out at the end of the year, like, look, I, I have to set your expectations. It's going to be, it's going to be alpha. Like whether I'm going to get around to making the GUI look nice or anything like that, I'm not so convinced. So, you know, you're going to have to bear with me while I sort this stuff out. But I think really I want to get it in the hands of people so they can give me feedback on the gameplay. Like if the gameplay is solid, then I know I can build on it. Otherwise I have to like try other things. If it's like, oh, I don't like the play style because I don't like having to hold my phone like this. then yeah, that's a problem for me. So yeah, I want to get feedback. But that'll be the end of the year and I've still got two months. That's loads of time. Hey, this is post-edit of the Mythos. I would really just like to take a quick moment to talk about the plan for the upload schedules. Uh, this is probably going to be one that's more for the devoted fans. So if you're not a more devoted fan, then please feel free to leave if you want to help create this video's retention graph. So this video was delayed. I put out a community post last week saying that I would get it done for last weekend and obviously that didn't happen. So there's two main reasons for that. I kind of wanted to do this face-to-face -face rather than just over a comment because I think the first one was stuff that was just going on in my personal life. Um, I'd committed to quite a few things and that just ended up coinciding with the work I was doing. Um, so one of the main ones was that uh, I moved to a new city a little while ago. I decided I'd start doing a load of team sport. Uh, so I joined the rowing club because I'd done that a bit when I was in school. Um, and I ended up doing a race over the weekend, which was my first like proper race. I'd never done one of those before. I don't have any footage to show you, sorry, but regardless, um, well, my hands are still slightly blistered. I guess you can maybe see they've had some time to heal. But that was on the weekend that I was hoping to get the video out by. So there was there was this cutoff point where like if I didn't get it done by Saturday, then I would have to delay it for a little while. Um, and then I ended up going home to see family because we got some family members who are a bit ill. So. It's just like, you know, there's stuff going on. But the main thing I want to talk to you about, frankly, is um, I wasn't necessarily happy with the kind of quality of the content that I was making before. Now, that's not to say that I wasn't like completely unhappy with it. It's just I felt like it could be improved. It tended to be like me talking to a camera about some technical thing with some code spliced on top. Like there was never really any sort of storytelling. I didn't feel like it went any deeper. I always had one track over the whole thing. And it was just like, I, I just didn't really like that approach. So, and I kind of felt like, because I had two weeks to do this current topic, I saw the opportunity to make a kind of more complex video, which is only just watched. And I kind of wanted to experiment a bit more with it. So like higher production quality, a bit more editing. One of the main things I wanted to try out was there's a bit more of a conventional story structure to this thing. So there's like a three part act. It's the... I guess the dramatic intro, the kind of build down, slow, set up the, the scene. Um, you get part of the way through, there's a problem in between, and then there's a resolution towards the end. So that's a fairly common sort of pattern in storytelling. And I'd never really tried to do anything like that in videos before, so I wanted to try that. Now, it turned out it took way longer to do than I thought it would because it just did. Now, part of the reason I'm doing this just video at the end is just because I want to reassure you, the most devoted members of the audience, um, that I am still committed to this project um i and i just want to make it clear because the thing is that in this sort of niche the game dev youtube niche there tends to be a pattern of the creator will just disappear at some point and then it'll be radio silent and then you'll be like well i've been following this project for however long and it's just suddenly dead so i kind of just felt like i'd upload this video when i uploaded it but like it just it, it took longer than i thought it would and to be honest like the longer it took to make this thing and the more behind schedule i was the more i just didn't really want to look at it because it was just like, oh, it's behind schedule. But I got it out anyway. I'm very happy with what I ended up making. So um, so obviously, please feel free to leave me a comment. But the thing is, um, this is not going to be the style I would probably want to keep doing. The problem is that I can't really maintain the focus on the game if I'm constantly making a video. Like if I spend like one week or something like that, then that's like 
a whole quarter of a month that I don't have to do other stuff. So it's just not a sustainable pattern. Like the, the plan before, when I did the weekly videos, the whole point was that I would do the week's work and then I have the final day to edit the video. Now I did like that pattern. The problem was that it took me basically all of Sunday and often part of Saturday to do that. And when I say all of Sunday, it almost always ended up going into the early hours of Monday. Like I would always, almost always have to pull an all nighter to get that video out. And that just wasn't sustainable. Like that was why I had to stop doing it. I physically had to say like, I can't keep doing this. Because doing that every week for however many weeks, it's a bit of a nightmare. And the thing is that then you have to make sure you're on fine form for the rest of the week. You have to keep developing the game. Otherwise you have nothing to talk about at the end of the week. So then sometimes the video might get delayed because I didn't have anything to talk about. And it's just like, uh. the thing is all this stuff is kind of a new experience to me. Um, and actually I'm quite enjoying the way that the community is right now where it's a small group of people I tend to see most the same people in the comments each time and I, I kind of like that like there's not massive pressure and I think people kind of kind of understand where it's coming from personally I think the channel will start to see growth when the game starts to look more interesting because I remember prior to starting the weekly videos I made this one devlog before where I spent a lot of time getting a load of like you know cinematic 4k shots of myself developing the game and then I would look at the game and I think oh this thing looks amateur hour like it's not it's not proper yet so i think the growth for this game is really going to come when the game actually starts to look good and it's just not really there at this point so i think what i kind of want to focus on for the channel right now is just learning how to make good devlogs learning how to make good videos i mean learning the skills required like i didn't know how to like record good audio or anything like this prior to actually starting doing this like the audio in the first video is way worse than what it is at the moment so um, clearly I'm I'm learning, I'm growing, and I'm just enjoying the process right now. Much of the reason I wanted to do a set upload schedule was because then it would just give you that kind of consistency and that belief that I was actually able to maintain a project like this. I definitely want to keep doing, I would say, weekly 10 minute videos. It's just really a case of do I have content that's interesting enough to turn into a video and then do I have the time to actually make an interesting video of it? Because if I'm mainly doing technical stuff, then it takes more legwork, I would say to actually get something interesting out the other end of it. And that's a bit of a difficult one. Regardless though, thank you very much for watching. Um, I think I'm gonna go off and get a haircut when this video is done, because I've been hamming it out for the past few days. Other than that, I'm gonna cut back to where it was in the video before. So, peace. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how everything turned out. And that's the outro. Only joking. I'm just going to eat this slice of cake for you. See you in the next video.